Christian Knight here with Mike Watson, and we're going to talk about changing gears. So thank you so much for coming by. Hey, thanks for having me, Christy. So for those who don't know, can you explain exactly what changing gears is? Yeah, and changing gears is basically a way of mixing up your play to deceive your opponents. Uh, so, you know, when you've been playing, I guess this typical example would be when you're playing sort of tight or conservatively, then at some point you're going to start mixing in a lot more aggressive races and maybe some big bluffs after the flop. Okay, when you're playing in a tournament, what kind of things do you look for um, to, to indicate when you think that you should be switching it up? Um, in a tournament, it often depends on your table draw. Um, if your opponents are actually very weak players, there may not be any need to change gears at all. Okay. Um, so changing gears, I think, is more important when you're playing against a strong player. Who will notice if you yeah, are Yeah, exactly. Gears. Who's going to be aware of what you're doing and is going to actually you know, be adjusting to how you're playing. So, uh, yeah, in a tournament, I mean, often there are situational factors that will make you want to change gears if you're near a bubble, um, sometimes the size of the ante, things okay. like that. But uh, in general, you know, if you just feel like you've been playing conservatively or playing really aggressively for a long time and people are starting to catch on, then, you know, at any moment you could just switch to playing the opposite way just to throw everyone off. Okay. When you're playing aggressively, um, if a table's just letting you run them over, I guess there's really no need to switch gears, but do you want to after people start calling you lightly? Yeah, definitely. If you've been playing aggressively and they're starting to catch on and they're starting to call you down, that's probably a time when if you switch to a more conservative strategy and show them a big hand that you're just going to get paid off. Because I see it all the time. Some people have like one gear and that's like go, go, go and they can't stop. Why, why don't they ever consider changing gears? Is, it just, is that just like a player flaw? Or? I would imagine for some people it is. They just, you know, they have one way that they play, that's how they play, and mm -hmm. they don't really think of, you know, switching and adjusting that much against other players, so. Okay. Yeah. Can you give me an example in a tournament that you've played where changing gears really helped you out? Yeah, I mean, probably the, you know, the most obvious example for me was when I was down to seven players in the Bellagio Cup in July, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I've been playing very, very tight, very conservative for almost the whole time, just showing down hands. And I finally decided to make a move when uh, John Fan raised my blind. And uh, so this was, again, it was a situational aspect as well, where at seven players, I was pretty sure he didn't want to go out on the TV bubble. Right, exactly. So I decided to re-raise him with just complete garbage and then follow through with a bet on the flop. And I was able to get him off of a big hand, able to get him off of queens when a king flopped. Okay. Oh, he did fold queens. Yeah, he folded queens face up. Nice. Is there, are there players uh, that you would more rather make a move on than than others? I mean, is John Fan like the optimal kind of player to make a move on? No, I don't think in general he would be because he's, mm -hmm. I mean, he's capable of calling down light if he thinks that you're full of it. And, but uh, in that situation, I felt like, you know, with everything that was going on, situational and my image, it was such that it would still be, it would still be a good spot. And he's obviously capable of folding hand too if he thinks he's beat, so. Okay. But yeah, you definitely need to be, you know, aware of who you're playing against because some people will not adjust to you. Mm -hmm. uh, or they'll, they might even be thinking one level ahead and be thinking, oh, this guy's about to change gears, I'm onto it, you know, and it happens sometimes, especially when the, the internet kids are playing against each other, like, you know, I can play tight for two hours and then the first time I re-raise them, they just assume that I'm making a move, so, yeah. even though I haven't done anything for two hours, so. Okay. If you notice players at the table are changing gears, do you try and exploit that? If someone is all of a sudden tightening up because they know that you know that they've been playing aggressively. Right, if you can pick up on that, then you have a really big advantage on them because they're gonna think that you still think they're really, really aggressive or really, really tight when in fact they're playing the opposite. Mm -hmm. And they don't expect you to have picked up on it yet. And if you have, then you know, you want, you're completely like a level ahead of them and you're gonna know exactly what's coming before they do it. Okay, well, is there any difference in changing gears in cash games and tournaments? Um, it's pretty much, it's like pretty the, much the same idea. Mm -hmm. um, the thing in cash games, though, it, you have to do it a lot more because you're generally playing against a higher level of opponent, and they're okay. going to pick up on, you're going to pick up on a lot of your moves. And also in, in cash, you know, where you're playing deep stack, there's also a lot more room to make sort of more sophisticated moves on people as well. In tournaments, sometimes when you get really short, you just don't have the room to try right. to make any kind of crazy plays because it's just, you know, with the stacks being what they are, it's just not possible. <laughs> okay, what advice would you give to amateurs who would like to change up their play, but maybe they're scared to deviate from their their regular routine? Uh, it's just something you've got to try out. You know, if you're playing really, really small stakes, then it might not be something you need to worry about so much right, right now. But as you begin to move up to bigger games, or you're playing against the same players a lot, and they start to figure out what your normally your normal strategy is, then it's definitely something you've got to mix in. And the only way you can really do it is to just get in there and try some different things and see what works. You know, yeah. eventually you realize there are some people that aren't actually paying attention as much as you think they are, and there are others that it's going to work great against. But you just kind of have to get in there and try it. Great. Thank you so much. Hey, thanks for having me. Chris Yarnett with Mike Watson for Card Player TV.